Hey everybody, Psychosaurus is here. Welcome back to Age of Empires Online. And today, well, it's time to continue with the advisor units talk. And yeah, this time it's gonna be the Egyptians. Yay! So if you don't know what I'm gonna talk about, make sure to watch my previous video about the Greek advisor units to get the idea of what this is gonna be about. But basically, just talking about the advisor units specifically for the egyptian sieve here and like what they are good what's good about them and what's bad about them that's pretty much the idea if you want the general idea of advisor units i made the video before that but yeah let's get into this and egyptians have in total of five advisor units just like greeks at this point but yeah, so just like Greeks, three in Silver Age, two in Golden Age. And let's start with the H3 advisors. And these three advisor units actually have something in common. If just quickly show you, they are actually called Desert something. So we have Desert Swordsman, Desert Archer, and Desert Cavalry. So you can see it's Pretty much the same team and the idea behind them is gonna be pretty much the same so let's start with the desert swordsman so this unit and i this time opened the unit builder just so i see the stats for myself but yeah let's talk about this unit so this is an infantry unit cost pretty good amount of gold and some small number of food 20 foot 40 gold it's pretty good for you because hey caravans are probably the best income you can get so yeah that's pretty nice they produce quite fast at 3.6 seconds which is quite good training time they have pretty okay damage what's really important about them is they have very high speed for an infantry unit having nine movement speed that's very good i mean that's on the same level as some slower cavalry units, so definitely you can tell this is very fast moving unit. I think that it's the same speed as Volt Traders with their base movement speed, so very fast unit. And one thing that's worth mentioning, it's their Pierce Armor. They actually start at 0 0.30 and for some reason this unit is called to be good against ranged units. And I believe it's only for the Pierce armor, which looks a little bit weird because that Pierce armor, I mean, I can find a lot of units that have that Pierce armor and they, they are not necessarily good against range units. In this case, it's somewhat true because it its speed and the Pierce armor actually goes really well together so you can reach the enemy ranged units and start doing damage to them but similar thing could be said about the siege units like ballista catapult so you can reach them faster and also enemy defenses as well so from my experience for this unit this unit like i said it's very fast to produce it's quite cheap not the most expensive unit and since it requires gold it's easy to just spam caravans and have more than enough gold but for what it felt like to me it was just like the greek pesetairoi if you want to know what pesetairoi is like watch the greek advisor units but yeah it, this feels a lot like pesetairoi that you're supposed to like spam this unit and outnumber your units because this unit's health is also not that good it's i would say it's Stat wise, it's better than Peasant Thyroid, but also with the higher cost. I feel like it works similarly as the Peasant Thyroid. You, you're just better stat wise, so slightly better damage, a little bit better health, having some extra armor. I mean, I would say in comparison to Peasant Thyroid, it becomes better unit in general. But unlike Pesetairo, it lacks the bonus against infantry or in against anything in general. So that's not really good. But yeah, about this, I would say it's better to just swarm this unit, keep spamming it, 
sending in it so it does its work. Now, obviously, there can be a lot of units that can actually counter this unit, and because it has rather general damage, it becomes rather bad in against elite units, because obviously elite units having extra health, extra damage, okay, they, you can swarm them, so health is not really that big issue, but the damage is quite an issue, it's not the highest, to be honest. It definitely could be better. So, I would say this unit serves better as some kind of raiding unit. Because of the pierce armor you get, you can soak some extra pierce damage from the defensive buildings. You can then kill the villagers, focus the villagers, focus the enemy productions, town centers. That's what feels good about this unit, actually. And honestly... When I was playing the quest, it, I was like, let's try a more direct approach. Nope, that did not look that good. Then I tried the raining, and the raining felt pretty nice, because just getting there, they're fast, so that helps a lot. They have some pierce armor, that makes them survive. You have a lot of them, so if you lose a few units here and there, doesn't really matter. You have a lot of them. So I would say as a raining unit, this is really good unit can destroy some buildings quite fast, it's not the worst. It's pretty good at destroying buildings to be honest. Surrounded nicely. With the speed it's actually really nice, nice feeling about this unit. So yeah, it's a good unit. But I would say use it as a raiding unit, don't use it for direct combat. Especially in elite quest and definitely not in legendary quest so yeah definitely can do some easier elite quests not the most challenging ones maybe some e easier legendary quests for repeatables it's just like with pezzetar i feel like pezzetar is really good in normal repeatable quests because stat wise it's pretty okay so it can survive some amount of damage while also be able to do some amount of damage this would be the same situation once the enemy units become elite obviously the damage is just gonna be the value is not gonna be that that's what i'm gonna say because they do more damage you'll be losing them you'll have to spam more that means you will need more units on economy and then suddenly you have less units and suddenly the swarming power is not there so yeah that's all I'm gonna say about this unit. Good for raiding, bad for direct combat. Use it for some easier elite quests, maybe even some easier legendaries. But prefer to use it in some repeatables because it is quite nice unit to use. But yeah, let's move on. And the second advisor unit in H3, it's Desert Archer and after trying this unit because I almost never use this unit after trying it I'm definitely glad I did not because I feel like I found the probably the worst advisor unit in my opinion it is like the worst advisor unit and to explain why so just, just like the Desert Swordsman it it's Desert Archer. It does not have the very high speed like the Desert Swordsman, but it has the Pierce Armor. And that's pretty much the whole team of these Desert units. They have some Pierce Armor, which makes them more resilient towards Pierce damage, which makes them feel somewhat good against ranged units. Now, cost-wise, this is not the most expensive unit, I think. It's just 30 wood, 30 gold, so... It's the same as with the Desert Swordsman, 60 units in total, so that's pretty nice. Now, what do you need to know? It has pretty good damage, I mean, 25 base pierce damage, that's pretty nice. I think when I was testing it was like 47 for a ranged unit, that's not bad, that's actually really good damage. And remember, this is advisory unit, no gear is there, so 47 damage. It's already pretty good damage. And like having, I think it was like 300 health. That was also really nice. So this unit can take, take some damage. 
I mean, when you play legendary quests and they have like very high damage against you, this is not a good idea, but for some easier elite repeatables, this is a really good amount of health for a ranged unit. So that's very nice. And also it has quite fast training time, 3.7 seconds. That's almost the same as Desert, Desert Swordsman, so fast production as well, that looks very nice. Now what's really bad about this unit and makes me hate this unit? Number one, its line of sight is only 16. If you compare this to many other units in the game, most of them have at least 20 line of sight. There are obviously exceptions, but yeah, most of them have 20 line of sight. This ranged unit, I need to say, has only 16 line of sight base, which for a ranged unit, that's a very low line of sight. But yeah, this is not the worst because line of sight in this case is somewhat okay, because its range is even worse and it is only 12 maximum range base. 12. The only other unit that had like 12 range, now it has been improved, that was Peltast. Peltast had 12 range, but for Peltast I was like kinda understanding because that unit was rather, yeah I'm gonna have a lot of health, yes I have huge pierce armor like in comparison to this 0.30 Pierce armor of this Desert Archer, Peltas started at 0.5, so much better Pierce armor. And with the good amount of health from its champion upgrade, and then you could put some like Kitten of the Wolf on them, they could also reach like 300 health, no problem. So Peltas, I was, I was a little bit better understanding this, but this unit, I would say it's quite similar to the Peltas at this stage okay because of this so because of this low range it's hard to utilize its higher numbers of these units like like if you try to go for a lot of desert archers it's not gonna work that good because the low range means you need to get really close and this doesn't really work well with high number of desert archers if, if you imagine that the maximum range of your unit tells that within a circle with radius of the maximum range of your unit within that circle you can actually attack that unit with your, your ranged units well if it's only 12 that's quite a small circle okay it's very small so if you have a lot of uh, these desert arches that's not gonna work for you that well so that's only one huge disadvantage. You need to get really close, which means, hey, you'll be taking a lot of damage. Now, because of its low line of sight, it's also very dangerous for you to go anywhere, because if you suddenly get somewhere really close to something very dangerous, like, let's say, some ranged siege unit like Ballista or Catapult, and you have like a whole group of these, yeah, that's a free hit for the Ballista, if you ask me. And that's not a very nice thing, although yes, these units have actually pretty good health, it's not like you can survive that hit with much health left on those units, okay? So careful around that. Definitely I suggest building watch posts so you can actually see where you're going and avoiding the dangerous situations, okay? It's not really nice. But yeah, what I seriously like about this unit is, it, is it's very high damage. The base damage is just really good, like getting close to 50. I I would have to take a look at how many of the ranged units usually reach that, but if you take a look at some ranged units, usually if I include also the population cost, many of them actually per pop have around the 50 dps some go below some go a little bit about so damage wise this unit is not that bad to be honest it's actually i would put it somewhere into the 
better roster of the ranged units because it's not a bad DPS at all. But because of the low range, hey, you need to get close. Pierce armor helps. That's definitely a good fact about this unit. If you have the pierce armor, hey, it's easier for you to get closer. Because you won't lose that many of them against the enemy ranged units that easily. The health helps that fact as well. So once you get close, hey, you need to fire. You need to fire and kill as many units as possible. And with, with the high damage, that works really nicely. But yeah, because low range does not really work well with the high numbers, you still need some kind of frontline. And in case of Egyptians, it's hard to tell which unit would make for a good frontline for this unit, because either that unit is gonna die very fast, usually, because we are talking about the infantry, or even camels if they're fighting spearmen, or it's just very expensive elephant. But elephants kind of make sense because you are, you are already going for the fortress because of the desert archer. So why not just mix in few elephants? That can work nicely sometimes. It does not necessarily have to be the typical war elephants. You can actually go H4 advisor unit, the armored elephant, which I'll be talking about later in this video. But yeah, prefer some frontline with this unit and the high numbers are just not gonna work that well. So if I had to say, try to spread them, like make a huge, what, what do you call it? What do you call it? Like you spread your units, so is it? I forgot the word for it, I think it. But yeah, spread them, surround the enemy units so you can utilize the numbers as as well as possible, okay? And that's pretty much it, all I have to say, so yeah. Careful with this unit, and seriously, I would put it as the worst unit. If it was like good at destroying buildings, but because it's a ranged unit, yeah, that's already going down. Okay, let's move on, and that's the last H3 advising unit, which is the Desert Cavalry. And Desert Cavalry, if I had to describe this unit, I would, I would say it's the Egyptian version of the Greek Hippica. And that that's literally the best description I can come up with for this unit. And to be honest, it even has the Hippican's voice lines. So if you ask me, this is literally Hippican just for Egyptians. And even if you look at at the stats okay let's start with that so first of all cost 70 food 60 gold it's definitely cheaper than hippicon it's the egyptian version obviously and the cost although it might look somewhat high remember as egyptian you have priestess of ra and you should always utilize priestesses of ra always so the cost is definitely not the worst Think about this unit and if we consider the total cost which is 130 65 units per pop i mean that's pretty close to what the desert swordsman and desert archer cost so it's not that bad cost to be honest moving on it has very good D dps i mean starting at like 42 dps or i don't know if it's like the correct value so like 40 dps base that's pretty good damage output for H3 unit, like having 40 DPS, damn, that's pretty good. Especially when you're leveling up, like, that's some really good damage. If you have a bunch of these, they can do some serious damage. Next would be, obviously, good thing is the Pierce Armor. I mean, it's just, again, Desert Cavalry, okay? So if you hear the see the desert in the name, you know it has 0.3 on PS armor, okay? It's a cavalry unit, so it has also some good crush armor and 0.5, so yeah, that's a nice thing. And then it has, I would say, pretty okay movement speed. And uh, I remember that I was saying that had I was like at 9, I know it's at 10. And I said that it is like one of the slower 
It's not necessarily that slow, but because you like the stable upgrades for additional movement speed, this movement speed auto starts pretty nicely. It's a really good value at the start. Later, it falls off. Okay, it's not that good. So, it's a pretty okay movement speed. Not gonna lie. And then, one thing we need to take a look at, again, it's the training time. And I guess that's probably the third thing about the desert unit. So, it would be like the Pierce armor. It would be... Pretty okay cost. And then, it would be the training type, which... Are very fast for the unit types that these units are so in this case it's eight seconds for desert cavalry eight seconds for a cavalry unit expert that's, that's pretty fast not good I would have to take a look at the Babylonian Lancer with four gardens that one would be like six seconds I think so with this being eight seconds it's not that bad, but remember, we need fortresses for these units, and fortresses cost a lot of resources, and you need a bunch to be able to s maintain your army, okay? Luckily, the fast production here is the good thing, because, hey, it makes sure that the army numbers are up. And since you're playing as Egyptian, your fortress is actually built a little bit faster, at 2 minutes base build time instead of 3 minutes just like most of the other sifts. So yeah, it's not that bad. But yeah, back to this unit. So what is actually bad about this unit? And again, probably the bad thing about this unit is it lacks some bonuses. Just like the other two units, okay? The Desert Archer although has pretty good damage. Again, no bonuses, so it can fall off at doing damage to some certain units and same goes here but this is like hippie gun so i i think we can agree on that we are gonna expect this unit hitting quite hard which is actually true but unfortunately once you start trying some harder legendary quests you will realize okay the damage is nice it could be better but i think it was like at 80 dps for me if I include all the armor attacks and I think milestones as well, it can be like around 80 DPS fully upgraded, which is a pretty good number actually. Remember, hippie guns can get like 120, but that's like H4 heavy unit. So, what would be like better comparison? Lancer. Lancer reaches like, depending on the gear, it can be either around 70 or around 80 DPS. Same goes for like the Norse Horseman, like it's a pretty good DPS for cavalry unit, okay? So definitely nothing that should be under underrating the unit, okay? The DPS, it's definitely its strength. What its weakness? It would be its health, okay? I see here in the stats that it has something a little over thousand HP which is okay if we are leveling up doing some easier quest that's not bad okay that's a good value once we reach the more challenging quests this can be issue okay this can be similar issue to like let's say Norse Raiders because like usually th that unit right now it's pretty good it's really good unit and but yeah, before the latest advisory work, okay, ignore the, ignore the, what's her name, Ingrid. And just focus on the radio units. It's not a bad unit. The issue with that unit is it dies somewhat fast, especially against enemy spearmen. It is very fast. It can easily surround the enemy units, do a lot of damage to buildings and even some economy damage by killing villagers. So that's about the Raiders. This, I would say, works somewhat similarly. It's just not gonna work that well as the Raider. Okay, but yeah, I would say it has similar weaknesses. Again, does not do a really good day. Good work against enemy Spearman. The Spearman will just destroy your desert cavalry. Okay, that that's one of the big issues here. Not only like Spearman, but also like... Prodromos, Horsemen, 
you know, the anti-color units, they, they can be nasty here. And the low health here does not help it that much. And obviously the other units are gonna hurt you as well. I, I mean, okay, you have some fierce armor, so defenses, ranged units, they, they are not that bad, okay? You can definitely survive those. But yeah, infantry in general, cavalry in general, they can be very annoying, especially if they are elite. If you're playing normal, repeatable, this is a very good unit, just like any other, other advisory unit. You can definitely do some easier elite quests, maybe even some easier legendary quests, but because they will be taking a lot of damage, especially the units have multipliers, because this unit lacks melee armor yeah it's just gonna hurt you and the health definitely does not help that i mean hippicon has like twice the amount of health so you can tell that's a huge difference okay and not only that like 50 percent more dps so hippicon is definitely much better value but yeah do not underestimate this unit definitely give it a a try this is i would say of the egyptian units the better one the better of the advisor units so definitely give it a try like i said it's it's just like hippicon it's just weaker but also cheaper and produces faster okay and that was the last h3 advisor unit again if you feel like i forgot about something Remember, comment section down below, make sure, so people know, hey, you forgot this, this unit does this, okay, definitely say something, because this is supposed to teach people about the advisor units, how good they are, and how poorly they can do in some scenarios, but yeah, let's move on to the golden age, and here we have two advisor units, the last two, Starting with Blade Master Kaba and the Kopesh Swordsman. And Kopesh Swordsman, I would say, is probably the best. Oh, not the best, but like my most favorite of the Egyptian units. Or maybe the second one. But if I had to say, if I had to exclude the Armored Elephant, because it's just elephants and they will do a really good job. I would say that this would be my most favorite advisor unit here in the Egyptian advisor unit roster. So what this unit is about, it's, a, it's an infantry unit. It's good against enemy infantry, it has nice bonus against them as well. At two times bonus. So that's they are doing a pretty nice job against infantry. It's not the best, but it's pretty okay. They also have some good infantry armor, 0 0.30. That's pretty standard. So they are good at that as well. Now they also have very good health if you compare it to other Egyptian infantry units. And even if you take a look at the advisor units from the Greek roster, this is quite tanky unit actually. 700 health at least i mean you can go even beyond that like closer to 800 that's pretty good remember somato felix was like 1000 health so only like 20 percent less that's not bad and remember the infantry armor here definitely can do its magic and help you against the enemy infantry so I would say it's quite tanky unit. Not only that, they also get Pierce armor, also 0.30. So we can, we can already see this is somewhat resilient anti-infantry infantry unit. And that's how I describe this unit. So think about the Axeman that does less damage, but is much more tanky. And even the damage is pretty good actually. I would say it's I mean, really good. For an infantry unit, I think this goes like to 40 or over 40 DPS. So, it's a very, very good unit to use. Now, obviously, it's heavily armored and it has to have some kind of weakness, and that would be its movement speed. 
only 4.5 so for an infantry unit moving at the speed of a battlegram yes this is very slow unit and it definitely its defensive ability is not on the same level as let's say somatophylax because somatophylax is like the ultimate tank advisor unit here in the in age of empires online this would be however pretty close to somatophylax like the second I would say like second tankiest infantry unit that you can find here. The Pierce armor definitely helps, but it's definitely nowhere near the Samantha Felix. The infantry armor definitely puts this unit on the same level or maybe even above. I think it's actually above Samantha Felix, so definitely good to use this unit against the infantry. Definitely you should use it against infantry if I had to suggest Try to support it with some good backline. Now, again, we could go with the Desert Archer, but for a unit that's slow and you need to reach the enemy units, and then you have like somewhat faster Desert Archer, it looks nice, but yeah, how about what about the backline that's like further away, like the enemy siege, for example? Definitely not gonna do it with Desert Archers, okay? So I would suggest supporting this with some either catapults because infantry plus catapults that works in many quests and uh, otherwise I would say elephant archers here can work nicely again it's the fortress so uh, as you are going for the copper swordsman hey adding few elephant archers can be nice addition to your army composition so yeah, also the cost, it's 40 foot, 35 gold. I think that that's the same as the Phalanx. It, it's pretty expensive, okay, for an Egyptian unit. Typical e Egyptian infantry units are not that expensive. Like you, you look at the Spearman, obviously that becomes cheaper even. You look at the Axemen, those are quite cheaper. This is somewhat ar more armored unit, so I would expect it to be a little bit more expensive, but that more expensive yes that can be somewhat annoying but remember priestess of Ra, really strong unit you need to use her and you can actually support the copper swordsman with the priestess of Ra. the armor actually works really well with the healing from the priestess sis. so definitely try to combine some priestesses there as well they not only help you with your economy, but also keeping your units alive. Armor, definitely a good thing here. And also the training time needs to be mentioned. 3.90 seconds, so almost 4 seconds to produce one of these. It's very fast. It's still very fast. Just again, Fortress required. So it's a good unit, especially against infantry units. It's somewhat, res somewhat resilient over against the pierce damage. And if you support it with some backline, with some priestesses of Ra, this can be a very nice unit to use. And I would say you can do some, some even a little bit more challenging le legendary quests with this unit. But yeah, adding some good support definitely should help you even more but yeah very good unit i definitely suggest using this just the speed is a little bit annoying okay so careful with that okay and last otherwise the unit here and that's the elephant master namor's armored elephants and armored elephants one would already think they are just gonna be like the war elephants well not far off i would describe armored elephants as a let, let's say you take the war elephant you take a siege tower and you, you let them have a baby that's what armored elephant would be and I, i'm not joking that, that's literally how this got this unit it's pretty much war elephant at first glance and you're not far off with that but also it behaves as a siege tower now why is that 
So first of all, if you take a look at, at its stats, HP wise, damage wise, including the splash, it looks like pretty good war elephant with some pretty good gear at the start. Now, it also includes some bonus against siege, just like the war elephant. It includes some bonus against buildings as well, just like the war elephant. But unlike the war elephants, that number is not that, is much higher. It's much higher than what the war elephants actually offer. So this is like the first thing where I would say it's closer to the siege towers and not the war elephants. Armored elephants are much better at destroying buildings thanks to its much higher bonus against buildings. Six times, that's a very high number. That's maybe not even better grams have that, uh, I don't remember. I think grams usually have like five times, not six times. But yeah. Six times, that's just a lot. And remember, you also have to splash. This unit can be quite devastating against enemy walls, okay? If you hit those small nodes connecting the wall segments, Yes, these beasts actually can do a lot of damage against walls, that's really nice. And against buildings in general, that's a huge damage, okay? If I take a look at the base damage here, it's like 38 DPS. Oh, yeah, if you're, you're leveling up, so 35 plus, and you make it like 6 times, that's over 200 DPS against buildings. That's just the base stats, 200, okay? You get all the free armory techs, increase this by 75%, because that's about what the free techs give you. And suddenly, hey, you're at 350 DPS per one of these beasts. Oh my god, that's a huge damage. That's just a lot of damage, yes. These monsters just destroy buildings. That's their main role. Now, moving on to their stats. Pierce armor, 0 0.50. So again, it's like War Elephant, but closer to the Siege Tower, okay? So, War Elephant, more resonant towards Pierce armor. That's, again, the good comparison here. Crush armor, that's what it takes from the War Elephant. And then movement speed, and this is where, it, again, it go, goes from War Elephant towards the Siege Tower. Only 6 movement speed days. For a cavalry unit, this is probably the, the slowest I can think of. Honestly, this is the slowest cavalry unit in the game right now. Can't find anything slower, so very slow unit. Also, training time, 30 seconds. That's a huge training time. Even for like your typical calorie units, also the calorie units we saw so far was like de desert calorie, 8 seconds. Head tire was like 10 seconds. And golden hippicon I think was also like 10 or 11 seconds. So armored elephants, 3 times the amount of what the other calorie units we've seen so far. Yes, that is much worse. So definitely slow to produce, but the high health definitely helps you here because you don't have to replace them that much. But if you have to replace them a lot, this is another weakness for these units. That's their heavy cost. They cost a fortune. 300 food, 250 gold. So the food is the same as War Elephant, but the gold cost is much higher. And it's a 4 pop unit, so even if I include the pop and take it, take a look at it as cost per pop, that's 550 for a 4 pop unit. That's just so such a fortune. That's almost 140, it's more like 138 per pop. That's a huge amount of resources. That would be probably the most expensive I can think of. Not even the Babylonian Royal Guards cost that much so it is very expensive unit slow to produce but it has very good health 
It has very good damage output, especially against buildings. Unfortunately, it is slow, but it, the armor that it, this unit has actually helps them a lot. So, if I had to say, it's a good unit. But be careful not to lose them that much. Definitely can serve you as a good front line. That's a good thing. But most important, use it as a siege unit. Because as a battering ram, as a siege tower. Because that's what they do best. They destroy buildings. They demolish bases. But they won't move that fast as war elephants. So that's the weakest. And just like with the battering rams. I was talking about it, dude. During the summer event video, when the new ram head was there with the movement speed, I said it. Battery rams, their biggest weakness, it's their movement speed. They move very slow. Damage is very good. Then you put like HP gear on them so they can survive for as long as possible. But, but their movement speed is the last weakness. And this unit actually. Just like the Siege Tower, the movement speed is the weakness. It is color unit, but it is the slowest color unit. But yeah, my recommendations for this unit, use it as a war elephant. But try to destroy the enemy productions first, as soon as possible. You don't have to send like a whole group of them, you, you can send just one or two. They will destroy those production buildings in no time. That's that's what the bonus does. And then, if you fight units, make sure to that they are clumped up all, all in one spot, so you can actually fully utilize the splash and kill them faster with this unit. That's what you need to do. If you fight them one at a time, yeah, that that's not fully utilizing the strength of this unit. And it can even hurt you, okay, a lot, because those units might suddenly live longer than they should. Okay, that's the armored elephant and the last advisor unit. So hopefully I did not forget. I know it's the Egyptian advisor units. These are somewhat less interesting than the Greek ones, because yeah, the Z archer. Desert Cavalry, Desert Swordsman, it is just general units uh, with some Pierce Armor, that, that's it, okay? Then you have Corp Swordsman, which is interesting because it is quite heavily armored. And then we have the super heavily armored Elephant, so... Yeah, you have like two interesting units, the rest are just two general. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. If I forgot to say something about these units, make sure to leave a comment because I hope I did not. I have the stats in front of myself and there shouldn't be anything I've missed. But yeah, it can happen, okay? So leave a comment so people know as much as possible about these units. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. Share this, share this so more people see this. This was Psychosaurus, and next time, yeah, next ones would be the Persians. So yeah, look forward to those. See you next time. Bye.